In this video we're going to see how to quickly increase and decrease the intensity of, of a motion uh, without doing it by hand. Here I have an idle loop and let's say that I find the intensity to be a little bit too strong, like I would like to reduce the breathing slightly. What I can do is uh, just add a layer and convert it to override. So now if I key on, this, on that layer, instead of being a, an offset like a usual layer, uh, it's going to override and, and uh, cover up the data coming from the base layer. So let's say I key on that first uh, frame here. Now because my layer is at 100%, I don't see anything anymore coming from the base layer, which was uh, like this. And I can just uh, reduce the intensity of that layer slightly so maybe I want to reduce the motion by 50% for example or maybe I want to reduce it by 75% and I have something very subtle so you can do it like this with just one key over the entire uh, layer but maybe you want to be uh, a bit more subtle than that so if I look at another example here I have a little idle break where the character looks left then right and let's say I find this to be a, a little too extreme. So I have two ways of editing that. Uh, maybe I want to keep the exact same motion at the beginning and at the end, but I just want to tone down um, the part where he looks left and right. <clears throat> so of course you can duplicate your base layer and just uh, delete all the keys in the middle in this case so pretty pretty uh, brutal and maybe i, re I uh, remove uh, three keys after my uh, last key and i, I remove three keys uh, before my first key to have like uh, some smoother tangents and here i reduce the motion completely but once again if i use the same trick and i reduce the intensity of my override layer i i get some of some of that idle break uh, back. So I reduced it. You can also create an override layer. I'm going to call it like uh, animation uh, simplify. So that's good, for example, if you have uh, an animation with a lot of jitter or if you want to stylize uh, a mocap clip, for example, and give it more of a keyframe uh, feeling. You can add that override layer and this time it's empty because it's a new layer uh, so it's similar to the first example and I'm gonna put the weight at zero before doing anything else so my layer is at zero and now being on that layer I can actually key uh, in full body or in body part or whatever you need uh, so maybe I key the, the first and uh, the last key so if I keep going and keying uh, while my layer is at zero, I can, you know, select, I can quickly like, capture the, the keys that I want. So maybe I like this pose here, and maybe I like this pose here where he, where he comes back, and maybe instead of having that pose in the middle, I want him to directly go to the right. So I'm going to key here and key somewhere here again. Uh, so I'm... Right now I'm avoiding the part where he looks too much to the side. So basically you're king on top of the base layer very quickly. So that's that's a lot quicker than you know having a, a duplicate of the base layer and having to you know uh, delete uh, all those keys and then delete all the keys after. Uh, just just keying in an empty layer is a lot faster in this uh, in this situation. And maybe I want to you know put that layer back at 100%, see what I've keyed. So I have something that's a lot more simple. Maybe I want to copy the last key, uh, copy paste it. Uh, at the beginning and at the end, for instance. Maybe I can change the timing a little as well. So you could do some rough edits like that. So you know, I have something a lot more simple, but then to make it a bit more subtle, again, I'm going to blend down that layer and gain some of the original mocap back. 
but not too much. So it, it's like an in-between. It's it's not too mocapy and too detailed, but it's not as uh, simple as the, the row keying that I've done. It's a little in-between. Okay, so this is how to reduce motion and like tone it down, right? And simplify the motion. But uh, if I go back to my original loop, what if uh, what if I want to, on the other hand, increase that motion? You have something uh, a lot more intense with, with broader movement. The first thing you would do is probably like go into the curves and start like in increasing those. Uh, but this is, you know, hard to do because you need to do it per axis and, and be careful with everything. So there's a little trick you can do with layers to do it automatically. Uh, it, it's converting the data into additive data. So because here on my base layer, it's always overwrite data, right? So if I duplicate that base layer and leave it like that as additive, uh, it'll, it's all broken, right? Because this is overwrite data. So I duplicate it and what you need is two other override layers. So I'm going to make one. Uh, so this is like my, my uh, base animation uh, duplicate. Okay. So this is what we're going to convert to additive. And on that other layer, this is my uh, base pose. So this is the pose that the, the conversion is going to be based on. In, usually if you have like an idle uh, loop, it's your first frame, it's your idle pose, right? So I'm going to key on my first frame. So I have a layer with just one key at the beginning, okay? And I have to duplicate that. And the last thing I need to do is actually put my base animation duplicate on top of everything. So if I turn off everything, I have my base layer, then I have a first base pose layer with just one key. Okay, so nothing's happening. I have that layer a second time. And I have the duplicate layer, which has all the animation. Okay. So the reason why we had to duplicate the, the uh, base pose layer in between is because we're going to select those two layers on top and merge them. Th this is how we're going to create the, the additive uh, data. And when we do that, we need uh, the base pose as a reference. So we're going to select those two layers and go into here uh, to the merge layer icon. And you want to have these settings here. So layers current, properties all, because you just have the properties that you keyed on those layers. Objects, you can say a scene, so you don't have to worry about uh, selecting uh, all the objects. They are just all the objects that were keyed on those layers. And here, result layer mode, you want to say additive instead of automatic. And then delete merge layers. So you merge. Might take a while if it's a long animation. And now you can see that it changed. You have a merge layer. On that merge layer, I still have a lot of keys. I can see that on the first frame here at zero, I have a zero key. Because the delta between my additive layer and the base pose is zero on the first key, right? Because it, it extracted the first uh, key, that first base pose from my original base animation layer. So that's why here on the first key, it's zero. There's no offset. And then the rest of the data is just the actual motion, right? It's just the breathing motion that we see here. So that's why those curves here on additive, on the additive layer aren't the same as the curves on the base layer, of course. And you can see that in terms of translation on FK, if I select any FK control, there's no translation at all. It's all zero. Okay. Um, and I still see the same thing visually because this additive layer is applied on a layer where I have nothing, like I have steady motion. So when I apply that layer on top, I see exactly the same thing that if I had nothing at all. But of course, because I have this as additive, now if I apply the additive layer without the base pose in between, now I have something that has a lot more intensity. You might realize 
more if I play it faster. This is the original one, and this is the original one plus the additive. So multiply by two, basically. And if we want to multiply it more, we can just duplicate that additive layer now and have it play, uh, like, and stack it on top of each other and maybe uh, tone down the, the last layer. And so I can copy paste that on another animation. For example, I have here an animation with just my idle pose. And if I paste that layer, of course, I need to make sure my timeline is as long as my layer animation. So if I select any object, I can see here my animation is 490 frames long. Oh, so now I have my additive data plane, and I can control the weight of it with the layer.